Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCG Talk, back today with another video. And today's video um, is going to be a deck tech on a deck that's been requested from, I'd say, like four or five people over the course of like my recent videos. Um, some people have been wanting to know what a Control Katsu deck would look like. Uh, so normally I don't play Control Katsu, I play aggro or even like kind of like a mid-rangey but more aggro based Katsu. I've never played control katsu for like an extended period of time obviously i've played control katsu builds just for fun to kind of see the differences but i haven't played it any time since monarch basically simply because the deck right now is not in a good spot um the game has sped up very significantly and it and the on hit effects have gotten way worse than they were when control katsu was really uh popular back way back right in the original welcome to wraith even arcane rising time frame so it's not a deck that i would honestly suggest playing but it's fun to try out new decks try out new things so like totally you know take that for what you want um and play the deck that you want to play that you enjoy but we'll get right into it and i'll kind of talk about some of the things that i thought about um for my control got build i kind of took like a compilation of a bunch of different ninja turtle not a bunch like four or five different ninja turtle decks and then also kind of played with what i thought was useful for the equipment suite, you're running the simple, like you're running Breeze Rider Boots. I run Breeze Rider Boots, my aggro build now, but for a control build, it's really good uh, because you're constantly threatening like those, you know, one off combo cards you're using after blocking out a little bit uh, to have go again and possibly get match trigger with and stuff like that. Tunic is a necessity. You're not going to have Heart and Cross Trap even in the sideboard for this. Breaking Scales, Mass Momentum. Uh, for equipment in the sideboard, you run three Null Rune. I keep the mask. That's the preferred equipment piece I like to keep. And then you run time skippers uh, with control Katsu, like in this meta, I'm trying to think like in the head of this meta, not in the head of when it was popular. Prism's going to be an issue because of her auras, um, because you're not going to go quite go as wide as you would normally in an aggro based build. So you're going to need something to kind of deal with Prism. So I personally would run time skippers in the Prism matchup, um, but that's just me. So getting in the main core of the deck, the core of this is to have you know, lots of defense reactions, lots, you have sigils, have thing, you know, a lot of three block combo cards have things that you can, similar to like an Ira play style where you can block with a couple cards in hand, but still come out with like Kadachi, Kadachi attack, or uh, maybe two attacks or something like that. And just really like try to outvalue your opponent with blocks. Um, so for defense reactions, we're running three sync blows, three flick flax, we're running the three sigils, not defense reaction, but you know, helps in that, in that regard. Um, and then, uh, Running through be running three fate, for, yeah, three favorite scenes, three signal blows, three flick flex, so nine defense reactions, and then running the sigils. Um, and then also running two Toma Findals. Um, at worst, I'll use these for pitch for other cards, but um, uh, I like having these because on a full hand with the arsenal, right? Playing this how arsenal, uh, you know, you can have a five, you can draw, uh, you know, you gain five life or so, you gain a lot of life. It's like a really, really good sigil. Uh, which is really good for outvaluing your opponent. The other reason why I don't like playing this is uh, because there's a lot of other decks now that are really good at blocking, like Guardian and Crown of Seeds and stuff like that. Uh, Control Dash is really good. Prism's really good at blocking. So, like, the game's probably going to go to time more so than it would have when this deck was popular. Anyway, um, for the cards that are not defense reactions, we're right, trying to run a lot of combo starters to start, like, running a lot of leg tap, three leg taps, three surging strikes. We're not running head jabs or anything like that. We're running these combo stars to maybe start something off uh, and get lucky with this. Torn of Tempo, we're running two of. Um, and then we're running like basically two and then two Soul Beach Strikes. So again, trying to have some go again that when we can have it. Uh, and then running the second iteration of most of these combo stars. So like Rise and Knee Thrust, we're running Whelming Gust Wave, right? Uh, we're not running Rushing River or anything like that. Um, again, just trying to... Tr outvalue when we can uh for attack reactions i'm just running two razors just to kind of like throw them off a little bit if i'm trying to do something especially in game right um those razors can be really useful out of arsenal uh life for life i chose this over scar for scar i know it costs one and that's kind of like the takeaway but if it hits you gain a life which is really nice and if you have less life than your opponent it gains go again similar to how scar 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 for scar is but the game one life to me is just worth it um, so I put that in over Scar for Scar, but you could use Scar for Scar if you'd rather have that for like Katsu discarding. Uh, for blues, I'm running 18 blues, three Woman Gusways, three Fine Centers. You could honestly run any two power attack um, or three block blue. I just have three Fine Centers, so I put those in. It doesn't really matter for these blues, to be completely honest. Um, Lord of Wind, Soul Beach Strike, uh, Fluster Fist, and Rise of Knee Thrust. So again, 18 blues in total. 
Um, and then we're running some one-off combo cards, like two Pounding Gills, three Flusterfist Reds, uh, three Enlightened Strikes, not combo, but three Enlightened Strikes, like one-off good value attacks. Um, again, like most of these attacks are just trying to outvalue your opponent, outvalue your opponent, outvalue your opponent. Block with a couple cards, you know, block out most of their turn. You know, maybe they eat through a one damage or something like that, two damage, and you come in for six or seven, and they have to make that decision of, do I block this out, or do I... You know, if I only gave him two damage, now I'm about to take five, six damage. Like he's outvaluing me slowly but surely, right? Um, so that's that's the basis and the core of the deck. Again, the reason I would not run it is one, the game is just sped up too fast now. There's too many decks that just can outpace even a control Katsu. Um, I'm not saying you won't get wins with it at all. I'm just saying it's gonna be very difficult, especially in a tournament setting. And a lot of card, a lot of decks like Starvo and even Prism. Have a lot of like on hit effects that are nasty and um can really like disrupt your hand anyway even ice so like it's really hard to to uh play the same style of ninja turtle katsu that you played when back when the deck was super popular in the sideboard you have three command and conquers right this is good for the prison matchup for the viscerai matchup uh heck even for the starvo matchup to make them crown of seeds out um unmovables are in here for Guardian, right? Any kind of high arching attack like Starvo, maybe even Oldheim, um, depending on what type of Oldheim it is. And then two time stat potions. The biggest, I think, threat to this deck is Prism, just because of its lack. It doesn't go as wide as you would want it to go. So for, I put a lot of deck tech against Prism with the Command and Conquers, the Time Skippers, and the Time Snap Potion. Obviously, Prism is very popular right now, too, so that makes it a lot different. Um, but yeah. This is the, the baseline of the deck. Um, this is what I would run if I ran a control Katsu, at least initial build. Uh, so if you want to try it out, definitely try it out. I know a couple of people were asking for it. Um, and yeah, it's really fun to play different iterations of Katsu and different, you know, fun um, ways of playing them, especially if you're just playing like armory level and playing with friends or online and stuff like that and just want to play for fun. Um, but yeah, I will link this deck list down below. Uh, hopefully this deck list made sense to you. Uh, and if you want me to do any other types of like one-off deck techs uh, and how I would approach certain archetypes within Katsu or within Ninja in general, please let me know. Um, I'll definitely be more willing to do those, do those for you. Um, and yeah, hopefully y'all have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much for tuning in to TCD Talk. Let me know what you guys would like to see in the videos. And yeah, I'll see y'all next time.